Fine Music Breakfast with Annabelle Drum. And it's six minutes past eight o'clock here at Fine Music Breakfast on Fine Music Sydney. A radio station you'll find on 102.5 on FM, on the digital network under DAB+, and also streaming live on the internet at finemusicsydney.com. Currently it's 19 degrees in Sydney. We have a high of 23, we're expecting, very pleasant. And pen with very similar temperatures. It'll be raining all day, all day with a chance of a thunderstorm and some wind picking up in the afternoon and almost exactly the same tomorrow as well. So let's hope they get plenty of that rain into our water reserves and onto the farms. Now, in the studio, I have with me today an Australian musician from Canberra. He's trained with WAPA and the University of Western Australia in Perth and has since then played first violin for some of Australia's major orchestras. He now runs a unique music ensemble that's definitely worth checking out. I'd like to welcome to the studio from the Phoenix Collective, Dan Russell. Good morning, Annabelle. Good morning. Thank you for coming along. Oh, you're welcome. You didn't drive all the way from Canberra today. No, last night. (laughs) (laughs) Last night. (laughs) Not too much craziness on the road, I hope. No, but it was kind of getting a bit wet, so yeah. Well, it's quite nice at the moment, isn't it? Because you've had your fires down there as well, haven't you? Yeah, we've been surrounded practically and smoked out. Yeah, well, hopefully the rain will will hit there as well. Yeah, I hope so. Now, um, I see that you've studied over in England as well as uh, in Perth. So what took you to England? Well, um, I actually picked up the opportunity to to tour with an orchestra. um, And the orchestra, based in Cologne, picked me up and and did a whole bunch of tours around the place in, in UK as well as mainland Europe. And... While I was in England, um, I stopped at a bunch of different music teachers and got some lessons, but also over in Germany as well. So there was, yeah, kind of a bit of hopping around. So that touring is a really great way to cut your teeth, isn't it? You it know? is, yeah. Lots, was it like lots of concerts one after the other? It was, um, very much so like a concert every night for either six weeks or up to two months kind of thing. Wow, that's yeah. pretty full on tour. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then, and what were you, what did you find that um, was most important and what you learnt in England? Um, not to take things too seriously. Um, I did some, some study with um, David Takano and who um, many Australian violinists have, um, have yeah, come into co- contact with. And he kind of took me, I, I remember this lesson at his house, which was kind of, it was in a, an old um, water storage place, which had been converted into, you know, a living place. And it was kind of like a wizard lived there. <laughs> and basically, um, I would heard stories of, you know, him sending people to practice down the very bottom of this kind of... Like in the dungeon. Yeah, it was a little, oh. bit, a little bit like that, but more wizardry. And up the top was kind of this circular room with full of bookcases and pianos and uh, ornate music stands and kind of he, he would give these lessons that were very um, flamboyant and and he would put, you know, hours and hours of dense information into a theatrical kind of performance, which, um, I mean, yeah, there was just so much information to grasp from that that it was just kind of... So the lesson was a performance is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, from him. <laughs> <laughs> Cram it all into yeah, your half an hour, was, your hour that you have. Yeah, it was dense. But, like, there were, like, two-hour sessions. They were just, oh, like, kind of wow. the, these intensive... Go home and have a sleep after that. Yeah, <laughs> try and digest that. But great experience. Um, and perfect yeah. if you don't have years to, to study with them either, you know, if you're only in and out. That's right. That's brilliant. Yeah. So you brought all of that back with you to here, to New Australia, and um, played with the different Australian orchestras here. But what is it that drew you to make your own ensemble, the Phoenix Collective? Sure. Well, basically, I wanted to play with the people uh, that I wanted to play with um, and play the music that I want to play as well. So chamber music is is very dear to me. Um, But I also wanted to, to bring music which was not often played in the concert halls or in the recital rooms, um, bring them to the audiences. There's there's pieces which, yeah, the majority of people just aren't aware of by by um, Bieber, by uh, Pandolfi, um, even works that are difficult to perform because they require, 
you know, electronics or, or whatever, um, giving small intimate audiences the chance to kind of experience these at a high level um, is kind of the, the main drive. Um, yeah. I so, because it's such a broad range of styles of music that you, yeah. you choose. You obviously <laughs> love many genres of it's, music. Yeah, I do. And I think that's kind of important as well because I want to reach a larger audience. I, I want to play the classics, but I also want to introduce things that are equally good. Um, and, yeah, there's a lot of material out there. So, yeah, why just keep playing the same stuff that everyone plays when there is some fascinating stuff out there and, you know, it can be presented well. And we also talk about the music and, you know, the context of it. So we kind of, it's a little bit educational, but at the same time it doesn't come across like that because it's, it's fun and it's our unique kind of And you don't take it too seriously, right? We don't. No, no. well, <laughs> we, we, we don't think classical music should be stuffy and should be that kind of highbrow kind of thing. We actually... We think it should be for the people, for anyone, and um, that's that's how we try to present it. And when you're doing things in intimate venues, um, that must make a big difference as well. So you've got the, like you're saying, the talk about learning about the context of the music, but then to be able to be up close and personal with fantastic musicians must make a big difference for the audience as well. It's such I a think treat. so. I mean, you can hear us breathe. You can hear us when we're moved by the music. You know, you can see it. It's that immediate that um that for me is is the magic of chamber music and i feel the vibe of a close audience more than if you're in you know a, a large hall mm. and i think that's a special kind of situation to be a part of it's you know there's the musicians there's the music and then there's the atmosphere and the room that you're in it's a very important part of the whole process so when you're feeling the vibe of the of the audience, then they become a part of the performance, don't oh, very they? Much. Really? Yeah, they they affect how the the phrases will be shaped. The acoustic of the room affects you know how long you might hold a note. It's all that's it's magic. all factored in, and that's that's the uniqueness of live performance because yeah, it's going to be different every time. Right. So some of the other shows that you've done in the past, other concerts, have included things like tango and baroque and French and folk music. What have you got coming up in this next uh, performance? Okay. It's it's very much a minimalist styled program. Um, Do you stand on one leg or, you know? Well, (laughs) (laughs) we will be standing. For a string quartet, that is a little bit unusual. (laughs) Um, Even the cellist? Not so much the cellist, no, but he has down. he has offered to stand. And um, anyway, I won't go into that too much. <laughs> but not on one leg. <laughs> but not on one leg. <laughs> so it's it's a program which is themed around mechanics or computers or kind of loosely sci-fi in a way. Mm. And so um, basically all our, our programs have some kind of loose theme that ties everything together. And this one... Well, we're going to start with some bark. You might be thinking, well, how on earth does that tie in? Well, we're doing the art of fugue, and fugues are very academic and mm, they're structured, mathematical, aren't mathematical. They? and mm. so we're we're looking towards the side of cogs and you know putting things together and and which is very machine related. And then after that, we're jumping straight into the twentieth century with Steve Reich's Different Trains, which is a wonderful work written for three pre-recorded string quartets, the Kronos String Quartet, um, and a live quartet, which will be ours, the Phoenix Collective Quartet. And there are also sampled train noises, sounds. There's um, sampled voices of Holocaust survivors. So it's known as Steve Reich's Holocaust Opus. Mm. And it's 27 minutes from beginning to end, played to tape. There's no click. And it's it's, very challenging. It's very challenging, mm. and you have to you have your um, immediate track in the musician's ears. Um, plus, it's amplified, not loud. It's not like loud music. It's still very much chamber music, and the, we have to balance our sound to that that the track produces. Mm. And but, it makes sounds like trains, doesn't oh, it? Because they're the old steam yeah, trains of the nineteen right. forties. And it's it's mm. it's quite remarkable. And we're we're working later in the year. Um, with a recording, but also um, incorporating a video artist to produce um, a, a, a silent Train film set. to right. go along with this. So this, that it, it's basically the soundtrack that you're listening to something like that. It's beautiful. It's it's a little bit heavy and dark in the middle, obviously, because you know it. it it's Holocaust. After I know. All. Mm-hmm. It's before the war. It's during the war, and it's after the war. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first movement represents. 
um, Steve Reich's, well, his parents were divorced and they're on opposite sides of America. And so he had he to travel backwards and forwards, yeah. on the trains. Mm. And then he started to think, well, you know, this was in the 40s um, during the war. What if I was in Europe at that time? Mm. What would that be like? And then that's where it, it gets a bit dark and then after the war as well. And you, you, you sense this, uh, this freedom and this, this break away from this oppression Mm. in that movement. Yeah, it's quite an amazing work. And what else is in the program as well? So, so there's an interval. Yep. Um, and after that, it's my own personal arrangement of Ivo Part's Frautress. Aha. So it's the solo violin version. It's not the string quartet version, which I've arranged for trio, essentially. So solo plus trio plus laptop. And um, a very dear friend Someone of mine. Someone plays the laptop? <laughs> yeah, I play the laptop as well. <laughs> which it is considered a musical instrument. Um <laughs> Which is funny, but anyway, we won't go there. Um, there's a pre-recorded cello drone, which is um, essentially scored a tour because the um, the pitches have been altered by my friend in Perth, Tristan Parr, who's a cellist and performer and composer and whatnot. And he has pre-recorded um, a dropped, um, so the cello strings have been dropped to give a really luscious, you know, double bass kind of sound mm, um, to give us the drone. Um, and okay. this piece kind of sounds like a city soundscape. Imagine you were distant from a city and you could just hear the hum, like an early morning start to, to the city waking up. But if you c- came in close, uh, you'd see that there's all these busy parts that are working to create that, that. So from a distance, it sounds meditative and calm, but up close, it's quite busy and frantic. Right. So that's my impression right? of, of Frautress. And Frautress actually means brothers. Right. After the part, um, we have an Australian premiere um, Sarah uh, Whalen Huff, she's an American com- composer. She wrote a piece uh, called Soul of the Machine uh, in 2007. And it was, yeah, performed all over Southern. So it's an Australian premiere then? It's a, yeah, first time performed okay. in Australia. Great. Um, and it once was performed in England in 2014 and recorded by an um, English. Um, ensemble. But yeah, we're going to be the first to perform it in, in Australia, which is pretty exciting. And that's, um, it's based on a, a, um, a story that she kind of dreamt up as um, a sci-fi situation between um, computers that developed feelings and emotions and dreamed that they wanted to be uh, human. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, Passing into the AI area, isn't it? So this much. is the sci-fi part. You have to be wearing almost your Star Trek outfits or something <laughs> to go with this. <laughs> Don't get me started on outfits. <laughs> it's been a, a topic of discussion. And you've uh, got a bit of Dvorak in there as well. Well, we've got to finish with a classic. And this, you know, written in the time of the Industrial Revolution, uh, it sounds like trains, it's exciting. It's, it matches it's, the rest. It's the buzz of life. Well, of, let's have a yeah. listen to a piece from that, shall let's we? Let's do it. So this is the American Quartet. We've got one little piece from us. This is the Molto Vivaci part. So the American Quartet at Dvorak is gorgeous. So it's going to be a wonderful concert by the sounds of things. Now, it's going to be on two different places here in Sydney, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. So the first concert is on Valentine's Day. Yay! It's uh, 7 o'clock in, in Mossman at the Art Centre. Mossman Art Centre and well, Art the Gallery. Mossman Art, Art Gallery. Gallery. That's correct. so. Bring your sweetheart to the Mossman Art Gallery, and that Definitely. starts at seven o'clock. Or your robot sweetheart. <laughs> your AI. <laughs> <laughs> and the the following day on the Saturday at two thirty in Annandale at the Hunter Bailey Presbyterian Church, which is an amazing acoustic. If you haven't been there, it's beautiful. It's late eighteen it? hundreds Gothic architecture, and it's the acoustics are incredible. So and yeah. there's quite good parking around there too. Yeah, free parking. Mm. Yeah, free yep. parking, fantastic. So that's two concerts, and we have, is it two double passes to give away, I think? Great. Yes, so your publicist has told me. So two double passes to give away, one for the Friday concert on the 14th of February at Mossman Art Gallery, 7pm, and one on the Saturday afternoon, 2.30pm, for the Hunter Bailey in Annandale. So if you're interested in going into the draw for those double passes, call us here at the radio station, 9439 Four seven double seven. Say you are interested in the concert Intricate Machines. That's the one, isn't it? That's the one. With Phoenix Collective. And leave your name and your phone number and uh, you can go into the draw. The draw will be just after 9 o'clock and the receptionist will call the winner. And if you don't win, that's okay. You can still get along because they're very reasonable tickets, aren't they? That's also part of the the whole 
Is it the accessibility? Is yeah, it? we we figure we want to play to more people rather than attempt to make money out of it. So <laughs> it's it's about it's spreading the word and getting to the people. It's very generous of you to to offer so you know such wonderful. So these tickets are between fifteen and thirty five dollars. Really, really generous. Bring your friends. <laughs> yes, bring them all along. They can. There will be plenty of room. So um, yeah, two concerts there. Keep an eye out for those, and that's next weekend. Thank you so much for coming in, Dan. It's been lovely talking to you. Likewise. And I'm sure those concerts are going to be fantastic next weekend. Great. Thanks for having me.